It's summer once again. While your orchids show vigorous signs of growth and begin blooming, the rise in temperature can take their toll and affect them to a great extent. Keeping them stress-free during these warm days can contribute to their healthy growth and blooming. Most growers find summer heat to be a challenge, but using a few care tips can put everything right back on track. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am Anubhuma from Mumbai. I grow my orchids on the windowsills of my third floor apartment. Mumbai has a warm tropical climate and summers can get really warm and dry. So I find issues such as bud blast and rehydration setting in with the rise in temperature. Most orchid hobbies find this constant seasonal adjustment to be a bit of an issue. There is no one solution fits all hack to resolving this issue since Different types of orchids have different sensitivities and the solutions accordingly vary to a great extent. The care instructions also need to be adjusted according to your climate and grow room conditions. Now I can almost hear you say, if this isn't complicated enough, then what is? Well, if you are a beginner, then let me assure you that it is not as stressful as you think. Now here's the thing. Getting organized can be a real game changer. I think that this is the mother of all hacks. If you organize your grow space and group your orchids according to their light, temperature and humidity requirements, your care routine gets considerably simplified. All you need to do is plan on a setup that is conducive to your climate and your orchids. This will allow your orchids to adapt well and seasonal adjustments will be minimized to a few easy peasy changes. All right, with this basic care tip, let's get straight to the point of discussion. The soaring summer temperatures, dry air and dust create stress for your orchids. Unless additional measures are taken to protect them from the heat during these months, your orchids will likely react to these conditions by exhibiting symptoms. Some of these symptoms are uh, dehydrated leaves, indicating dry spells between watering, sunburn, drying up, blackening or bleaching of leaves due to direct exposure to strong sunlight. Then they will also uh, develop a mushy softness indicating strong direct light and excess moisture coupled with poor air circulation. Wilting away of new growths or poorly developed new growths are also a sign of uh, stress. Bud blast or dropping or withering of buds and wilting and drying up of flowers before time is also an indicator of stress caused by summer temperatures. An increased incidence of pest infestations caused by spider mites, scale, mealybugs and others also contribute to stress during these warm summer days. With so many problems arising during summer, you need to protect your orchids from strong sunlight, higher than normal temperatures and the dust that arises from the hot and dry breeze. The tips that I am sharing with you are a result of my experiences in the past five years of growing orchids. I did take risks, I made mistakes, learned from them and I am now in a position where I can take a few calculated risks. So I have found my happy place. Not that I don't make any mistakes or uh, everything is going very smoothly for me. There will be challenges from day to day but I have learned to take care of them. These experiences have built my confidence and now I feel that I should share it with you because I find a lot of people struggling with these seasonal changes. 
So my first tip would be to remove your orchids from direct sunlight during summer. Orchids require adequate dappled sunlight to grow well and have a good bloom cycle. Some vandas, tulumnia, and others can even grow well in direct morning and evening sunlight. While this may promote growth and blooming during summers, it is always better to remove them from direct morning and evening light because strong light coupled with higher temperature can lead to scorching heat conditions. This can lead to severe dehydration of tissue and burnt leaves. You can make this out with the appearance of dry bleached yellow or black patches on leaves. New growths and sheets also dry up due to the warm dry breeze. A good way to assess this would be to check your orchid's leaves. If the leaves get heated up, then they will get burnt and become dysfunctional. If the leaves remain limp with closed flaps and are not opened out fully as they normally would, then they are drying up way too fast and lack regular hydration. This could also be a result of soggy medium leading to the rotting of leaves. Or it may also be caused due to uh, inadequate uh, watering and exposure to strong sunlight. To prevent this from happening, move your orchids to an area that receives dappled sunlight or indirect sunlight. You could also use a shade net or if indoors, a translucent curtain that just allows sufficient light so as to not heat up the leaves. Make sure your orchids are not overwatered and there is good air movement, either natural or with the help of a fan. Next on the list is to water your orchids more frequently. Depending on your climatic conditions, you may require to water your orchids more frequently during summers as they lose water through transpiration. The medium tends to dry up faster due to the heat and dry air drafts. If you use small sized pots for your orchids, then this poses a problem. They tend to dry up faster and so require frequent watering in summer. In order to resolve this issue, you can consider repotting your orchid in a bigger pot with a well-draining organic medium like pine bark chips or cork bark chips with a few strands of moisture retentive sphagnum moss layered in between. You could also use coconut husk chips to provide moisture. This will provide the right balance of air and moisture to the medium. Always consider this option when your orchid produces new growths. This will help it adapt faster to the new medium. In the case of your mounted and bare-rooted orchids, daily watering is mandatory. In summers, you may even have to water them twice a day. To reduce this hassle, you can allow them to soak up in a tub of water until the roots are fully saturated, especially the thick-rooted orchids such as Vanda and Phalaenopsis orchids. You can then uh, water them every second day as per their requirement. Always check how they respond. Look out for signs of dehydration such as limp leathery leaves and thin wrinkled roots. Increase the frequency of watering as temperatures rise so that the plant receives adequate hydration. This will help you gauge their requirements. Once they are adjusted, you can reorganize the orchids based on their watering needs. Believe me, this works very well and your care routine gets considerably simplified. Repeated training in such a way gets your orchids used to these intermittent drinks, which, if you think about it, is how they grow in nature. I have trained my Vanda orchids in such a way that I water them every third day. They seem to be responding well to it. Tip number three is to provide adequate humidity. Warm summer breeze reduces humidity in the air. This poses a risk for orchids as they require humidity for their healthy growth. While some heat tolerant varieties such as the Cattleya, Nobilior, Walkerina, Dendrobiums and others are unaffected by summer heat and thrive in such temperatures, most other orchids require additional measures such as humidifiers and evaporative coolers to maintain the required temperatures and humidity. Some hobbies provide these conditions in their grow spaces with water fountains, humidifiers and other such 
uh, remedies. But the vast majority increase humidity by placing humidity trays made from pebbles and water in a shallow tray. The level of water should be much below the level of the pebbles. This allows for continuous evaporation of water thereby increasing humidity levels in the area. Orchids respond well to this type of humidity. However, make sure you empty the water and clean the trays once in three days. Stagnant water becomes a breeding ground for mosquitoes and should therefore be avoided. Even if you place these trays, ensure that only a thin layer of water is used and this is allowed to dry up fully before replenishing the same. Since I grow my orchids on my windowsills, I mist them lightly in the afternoons to protect them from the heat. Also, I keep my orchids on the sills of my west-facing windows which get a good dose of strong bright sunlight in the afternoon. I have no choice due to my limited grow space. I use a thin cloth to lower light and heat intensity throughout the year. Light misting once or twice between 2 to 5 pm and switching on the fans for air circulation during hot and dry spells help prevent dehydration during summers. My next tip for you is to add a moisture retentive top layer to your orchid pot. Warm temperatures during summer induce active vegetative growth in orchids, so you find them producing new growths and roots. These are very delicate and can easily wither away due to excessive dryness or heat. Same is the case with seedlings. Their requirement of humidity is more than fully grown plants and therefore they get dehydrated by the warm and dry summer breeze. A very effective way to increase humidity in these cases is to place loosely packed sphagnum moss strands as the topmost layer of the medium. This increases the humidity level around the plant. Ensure that the moss is not too closely packed around the plant, but it is lined along the periphery of the pot where the roots are located. So all you need to do is spray some water to, the, to tide them through the daytime temperature. This works well if you are away at work during the day. Avoid spraying water in excess. This will result in soggy conditions which will compact the moss leading to rotting of new growths and roots. Always spray minimal amount of water and check how much time it takes to dry up completely. Then increase as required. The good thing about superficial layering with sphagnum moss is that you can remove the top layer when the rains begin in June. Keeping this layer on during the rainy season will lead to bacterial and fungal rot, especially if your orchids are growing in your balcony or windowsill as mine do. I always allow my orchids to soak up rainwater. To ensure they do not rot, I remove the superficial layer of moss that was used as a temporary top layer during the summer and expose my orchids to rain, ensuring water does not collect in the crown. My next tip for you is to provide good air circulation. Along with the provision of excess humidity in summer, you need to provide good air circulation. If you have an indoor grow space, then a small electric pedestal or ceiling fan can meet your requirements. All your orchids need is gentle air drafts which will distribute humidity and air and not maintain prolonged periods of wetness. This ensures that fungal or bacterial rot does not set in enclosed spaces. When I use a shade cloth in the afternoon, I allow the breeze to circulate by providing narrow gaps in the shading. So even if I spritz the orchid foliage, I am confident that rot will not set in as it dries up quickly. The next tip would be to keep your orchids clean and dust free. Orchids are slow growing plants and therefore require additional help from your side to boost their growth. They need to carry out photosynthesis to promote healthy growth and blooming. Therefore, their leaves need to be kept clean at all times. Dusty leaves become a problem in summer due to the dry air. This makes the plant vulnerable to pests such as spider mites, mealy bugs and scale. To protect the orchid from these issues, the leaves need to be regularly cleaned with a cotton ball or wipe dipped in very mild soapy water. Ensure that water does not get trapped in the crevices as this could lead to stem or crown rot. 
For added safety, blot out the trapped moisture with a tissue and dry it well under a fan. Coming to the last tip, it is about fertilizing your orchids. My fertilizing routine remains the same for most months of the year, barring a few winter months from mid-October to mid-February when I reduce fertilizing orchids due to a slowdown in growth. However, after that, in spring and summer, orchids resume vigorous vegetative growth and this is when I begin fertilizing them to meet their growth requirements. Whatever fertilizer you may be using, you could help your plants boost their growth and make them more resistant to dehydration, pest attack and microbial diseases by supplementing it with silicon. Silicon is a naturally occurring substance in soil and helps the plant achieve robust growth in terms of thickness of the leaves and roots, enhances bloom size and quality and increases photosynthetic activity within the leaves. The silicon increases cell wall thickness, thereby making the plant stronger from within. Externally, it makes the leaves and pseudobulbs thicker, shinier, greener and the flowers more healthy and long-lasting. This also enables it to withstand stress in case of changing climatic conditions, which is why it is a good idea to begin adding the supplement when the new growth start popping out. You could begin by using a quarter of the recommended dosage once a month and see how your plants respond. Gradually increase it to half the recommended dosage. In this case, less is always better. This said, I hope this video provides some good insights for keeping your orchids healthy in the summer months. Please leave behind a comment in the comment box if you have any queries. If you can come up with additional tips, do leave a comment and I'll see how best I can include them. Subscribe to the channel for regular updates and tips on growing orchids. Until my next, happy growing.